My parents are immigrants that came to this country with not that much, and I always saw how hard my parents worked. So growing up, I wanted to become successful so I can give back to my parents and give them things that they never had. So I assumed that the way that you become successful is by studying hard in school, by getting good grades, that we can get a good job. In my house, that meant that I needed to go out and become a doctor. You know, your typical Indian stereotype. Along the way, I realized that I didn't want to be a doctor, I wanted to be an entrepreneur, and I wanted to be an investor, but my parents didn't really like that, so they compromised. They said, if you're not going to be a doctor, you have to at least be an attorney. So I went through college, I went through law school, and I went through all the schooling to learn how to become successful, but never once did I learn about money. I never learned about how to manage my money, I never learned about how to invest my money, and I never learned how to build wealth in the economic system that we have right now. The first bit of financial education that every single person needs to understand, especially if you live in America, is that there are two different ways that you can make money. You can make money from your labor, and then you can make money from your capital. You have to understand this if you want to be able to build wealth because our education system and our schooling teach us how to maximize the income that we make here from our labor. You go to school to get good grades, to get a good degree, that way you can get a good job. This is the money you make from your labor. You go to work to get paid. Now, the idea of you going to school is so you can get a high paying job. You go and you become a doctor, you become an attorney, you become an accountant, you become an engineer. You're a high paid worker or you're a high paid employee. But in the economic system that we have right now, the highest paid people and the most financially successful people in the country are not high paid workers, it's people that know how to deploy their capital. Let me show you what I mean. So this is what school teaches us how to maximize. This is our corporate ladder. You go from analyst to associate to VP to director to the CEO. You go to the C levels. So school wants us to climb the corporate ladder. But what people who understand the economic system understand is they don't want to just climb the corporate ladder, they want to own the corporate ladder. Remember, we live in a capitalist society. This says it in the name. Now you can hate it or love it, the reality is we live in a capitalist society. In the name, it tells you that if you want to become successful, you have to deploy your capital. It's in the name. So the people who become insanely successful understand this, and they're working to grow this. They want to invest their capital because now it's your money working to increase value instead of just your labor. There's a limit to how much you can work. There's a limit to how much value you can provide directly from your labor alone, but there's no limit to what you can do with your capital. Now, I talked about this in a recent video, but this is where a lot of people get upset because they say, I'm disadvantaged. I don't have rich parents. I wasn't born into a lot of money, so how am I supposed to take advantage of the system? But what you need to understand is you need to use your labor to generate capital. That way you can use and deploy this capital. That way you can become wealthy in this economic system. Most people, the majority of people are working for a bigger salary. That's what they assume is going to make them wealthy. But that's a lie. Our economic system has it in its name, capitalist. The way you become wealthy is by using your capital. That way you can earn a piece of profits. See, let me explain this because it took me a long time to understand how this truly worked. I had to read a lot of books, I had to talk to a lot of people, and I had to experience it myself because this is something I never grew up learning. When you work a job, you're getting paid for the labor that you put in. Now, you could be a high paid person, you could be a low paid person, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's the same thing. You're working for the owner of the company. You can get paid a lot of money as an employee. Doctors make a lot of money, you have executives that make a lot of money, but at the end of the day, you're still working for the owner of the company. Now, there's a difference between the salary, the income you make, and the profit that a company generates. The profit is separate from your income. Now, what these people here, the investors, the people who deploy the capital are working for, is not an income, it's not a salary, it's profit. They're working for a piece of the profit. So I'll give you an example. Let's assume that I go out and I start a company. And my company makes a million dollars in revenue. So I sell, for some fun, I sell avocados. I sell guacamole, okay? I make a million dollars in revenue from my guacamole company, but I don't get to keep all the money in profit. I have expenses to pay. 
Maybe I have $100,000 in avocado costs, I have $200,000 in employee costs, and then I have another, say, $200,000 in other expenses. So I have to pay my CEO, I have to pay the people that mash the avocados, I have to pay for the salt, the pepper, and everything else. This all adds up to $500,000 in expenses. Now, I have to pay the team in order to run the company. Right, I gotta pay my CEO, I gotta pay the people that work in the actual avocado to guacamole making business. That's my cost. You're getting paid for your labor. And if you're really good at making avocados into guacamole, you're gonna get paid more money. But once all the expenses are paid, there's another half a million dollars in the bank account. The person who gets this is the owner of the company because now you own the equity. Now you do have more and more companies nowadays that are distributing some of this ownership, the profit to the employees like here at My Minority Mindset Companies, like at Market Briefs. We do a revenue share system where the employees get to share in the profits. But if you don't have that, what you need to understand is this is what wealthy people are working for. They're not working just to grow this by 5% or 6%. They want to see how can we drive more sales that way we can get a bigger piece of ownership. And the way that you can do that is by working for this. This might be investing in companies, it might be investing in your own company if you have that sort of equity structure, it might mean investing in real estate or investing in startups. You want to use your money to buy assets, investments, that way you can build equity either in companies or real estate or some other sort of asset that way now you can be the equity owner and get a share of this because now when you're working for profits now you have the team of people working to help grow the value in the company now there's another debate that a lot of people talk about this how much money should an employee be earning you have all the time people talking about minimum wage how much money people should be earning people should be earning more money and that's fine but what you need to understand now as the financially educated person is a concept called fiduciary duty I learned this in law school and it was a new concept that I didn't understand. Fiduciary duty is who you owe your alliance to, who you need to take care of first. An easy way to understand fiduciary duty is think of it like this. You have a date scheduled with your wife tonight and then one of your friends calls you and asks if you can play video games with them tonight. You can't cancel on your wife to play video games with your friend because your fiduciary duty is to your wife first. Well, in this case, in this corporate ladder, the executive's corporate duty the people who run the company, the executive's corporate duty is not to the employees, it's to the shareholders. It's to these people. So the number one goal of the people that's running the company is to drive this, the profit higher. It's not to pay the employees the maximum amount possible, it's to drive up the profit. Now, you have to understand, there's a moral aspect to this, there's a legal aspect to this, there's a financial aspect to this. You want to make sure that your employees are happy, you want to make sure your employees are well taken care of, that way they want to come to work every single day, that way they want to produce a good product. But if you are just working here, you're going to be constantly asking and wondering why you're not getting paid for money. But what you have to understand is the way the system works is designed to benefit this person. It's designed to benefit the person who's working for this, not just the person that's working for this. So you can do two things. Either you can go and work for a company that's gonna treat you better, or, or I guess, and or, you can work for earning more of this. That way you can deploy your capital. That way you can own equity in companies and real estate. That way you can build your wealth by understanding how the system works. This is why financial education is so important. And this is one thing that I wish, I wish schools would have taught me. And I wish schools would be teaching this to people nowadays so we can understand how to win in this system. Because rich people and wealthy people understand this. But most of us are never taught this. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.